Hello, my name is Brian, and I'm an addict. I'm addicted to filament. Whenever I see something new or shiny, I must add it to my collection. Whether it is wood or metal filled filament, a new color, or something shiny, ooh, shiny, I have to have it. And to make matters worse, I own both 3mm and 1.75mm printers, so now I need everything in two sizes as well. It's a problem, but not as much of a problem as keeping track of what I have in inventory. Which brings us to this handy little app. Before I start, I just want to make it clear that I'm not affiliated with the creators of this app in any way other than being a paying customer myself. I say paying customer, but the core app is free and you are only required to pay for extended features like adding costs and prices. The app is called Stock and Inventory, which is an accurate name, if not a little dull. I found it to be very useful in keeping track of my filament, as well as other 3D printed parts that I sometimes sell. The app is broken into two main parts. You have goods and documents. Now, documents is kind of a weird name for it, but it, these are actually um, transactions. So either it's a like transaction records like adding or subtracting stock or um, taking an inventory. So we'll start with the goods side of it. So you can add whatever categories you want and you can nest them as you as you go. So if we go into my 1.75 filament, you can see my other categories of ABS, flex, nylon, PC, uh, polycarbonate PETG, PLA, support materials. Um, if you go into any of these, we'll go into PLA. You can see all my PLA filament I have for 1.75. Now, um, I keep track of my inventory in spools. Um, if you want, you can also do, of course, um, by grams or whatever you want to do it by, or we try to do it by length if, if you want. Um, grams would kind of make sense, and your slicer is going to tell you approximately how many grams you're using, so it would be easier to sub easy to subtract. Um, I tend to just look at the spools and estimate uh, how much I used or how much is left, and that seems to work just fine. Uh, the reason I do mine in spools and not grams is because they're bought in spools, and uh, the price is associated in, per spool. So... Um, when I go to do my inventory at the end of the year for my business, um, it's easier to keep track of my inventory costs that way. Um, I've kind of gotten used to it. It's what I started as, and I've never felt like converting over. Obviously, you can do it either way. Spools, to me, works just fine. So let me run you through the basics of how this app works by adding this filament here. Now, I don't have a category for this yet, so we're gonna show you how to add a category. So I'll go to my 1.75 millimeter filament, hit the plus, create group, and we're gonna name the group High Temp. Okay, now you see I have a high temperature group. So let's click on that. I'm going to hit the plus and create an item. The name we're going to call 3D X Tech. P E K. K, natural, 1.75. There's no barcode on this. The description, I always go by the weight of the spool, so 250 grams. Quantity. Now notice it's not letting me do the quantity here. The quantity, I actually have to hit the plus or minus. 
So we're going to hit plus and then type in one. The price, I guess I can put the price in of 200 beans. Notice it said a document. I don't know if you saw that, but it said a document was created. Um, because what this does behind the scenes is it creates transaction logs every time you change the quantity. So you can actually see the history behind what went in and out and the prices that you paid or charged each time. Okay, last but not least, we're going to add a picture. Take a picture, okay. Okay, take a picture. Looks good. You can resize, move this around or resize. And you get a crop. And you see that it's added our picture. When you're done, hit the check mark. Now it's added. Now whenever I go into my high temp folder, there's my PEKK filament. Now if I ever need to change the quantity on that, there are a couple of ways of doing it. Um, the original way, and I think the longer way, is to do a stockroom transaction. So you can go into documents here. And there's incoming, outgoing, and stock taking transactions. So obviously when you're using your stock uh, it would be outgoing. If you just bought some stuff, it's incoming. If you're looking on the shelf and actually adding up what you have and plugging that number directly in, that's stock taking. So for, for our, our purposes, let's say I used some of that PEKK filament. So I'm going to go to outgoing, create a new document. It's going to ask me to add goods. So I'm going to hit the plus here. And probably the easiest way is just to search for it. So I can go P-E-K-K, -K, there it is. So it brings up the record. It's gonna let me type in the quantity. Now this is the quantity that I am using. So let's say I just printed something and used a 10th of a spool. So that is what I'm gonna put in for my quantity, 0.1, hit the check mark. So now we have an outgoing record with the PEKK for 0.1 of a spool, a tenth of a spool. Now here, we can actually add more. So if I wanted to use something else, um, I could nose around and say I'm gonna use three millimeter flexible filament. Um, actually, I just used some stuff here, so I'm gonna Go to my PLA, and I used some of the brass fill. So I'm going to say that I used .05 of a spool. Boop. There we go. So now I have two records there of things going out, you know, filament being used. And that's it. It's, they're done. They're set in stone. They automatically, once they're created, automatically affect the quantity in stock. So now, if I back up here, go to our goods, filament 175, oops, not want flex. I want the high temp. Notice we're at 0.9 of a spool, 9 tenths of a spool. So that's one way of doing it. Um, if you're, most of the time I find, since I'm, you know, you're gonna print mainly one spool at a time or something, I find it's easier just to, in, under the goods, click on the actual thing, and then use the plus or minus here. We'll say minus. So we're issuing goods. Type in the quantity change and hit okay. And there, it's automatically changed the quantity. And what it did is it created a record behind the scenes. So if we actually backed out of here, we went to Documents, Outgoing, we looked at the latest one here, we would see it actually created that one just now. And this was the one we did previously. 
So it's kind of interesting. You can, in this way, you can actually check and see, um, you can actually look at the history. So you can look at the item history and see all of the documents that affected it. All right, so that's pretty easy, right? Pretty easy to use. Um, you can move products around pretty easy. Um, say if I wanted to move this one somewhere, you can just hold on it. Say move to group. It's going to give you a warning, and then you can pick the new group that you want. Um, you can delete things pretty easily. Just slide, and you can either move, get information about it, or delete it. I'm not going to delete it, but you can do that. Okay, so that's the basics of this app. I'm not going to get super in-depth with it, but you can see it's very good for keeping track of your filament. Um, if you have a, a simple store, then you could also use this for keeping track of your inventory if you're not, you know, if you don't need to be too super sophisticated. It does have import and export functionality, so you can, um, you know, manipulate data in and out of it as you see fit. It has some reporting functionality too, and you can add customers and vendors to it. So you can, you know, use it like a little mobile storefront, which is what I use it for, actually. I keep track of my own inventory with it um, for the things that I sell, as well as my filament that I use to create many of my products. Um, well, I guess that's it. I'm not going to rattle on too much longer. I just wanted to thank you again for watching my videos, and uh, hopefully this was a helpful one to you. Cheers. This video brought to you by BrianKramerBooks.com. BrianKramerBooks.com for all your humorous science fiction needs.